Okay, I'm Tomasz uh, from Collabora and I will uh, talk about uh, the building the X-ray like uh, Un Object Inspector. So this is mainly a continuation from a uh, Fosdem talk uh, at that time uh, of the uh, when Fosdem was uh, held. Uh, I was in the middle of the implementation of the new Object Inspector, so finally now I can talk about how it actually uh, looks in, uh, as uh, as a whole. Uh, so first, uh, I will uh, just uh, quickly go through uh, the introduction and why why we did uh, this, why we need uh, the object inspector, uh, and uh, 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 why we had to implement it. So the. Object Inspector was a tender from uh, from the Document Foundation. Uh, uh, is the tender was for implementing support for a dedicated built-in Uno Object Inspector tool in LibreOffice. And uh, thanks to the o Document Foundation to make this uh, work possible, so that we have now this uh, awesome tool. Uh, so. The de development tools like this uh, Uno Object Inspector is now called. It was released uh, with uh, LibreOffice uh, 7.2 and uh, can be. Uh, this is the latest uh, release and can be freely uh, used. So, development tools about it. So, what first? Uh, let's talk about like Uno Object Inspector. What what is an Uno Object Inspector at least? So it's a tool like uh, X-ray tool or EMR, which was an extension to for LibreOffice. Uh, the, the main purpose of these uh, tools were to inspect the uh, UNO objects, uh, like what the properties are, the types and values, uh, which methods uh, it has, what uh, interfaces objects, UNO objects uh, uh, implemented, uh, which uh, types are supported. So, uh, in addition to this, uh, they also allow you to uh, traverse the uh, object tree. So you can go from one object, uh, uh, see what properties are, and uh, uh, for the properties, you can then again see uh, what object, an uh, object, uh, uh, it uh, contains. So you can go like recursively through through the document object model, which is very good for the. Uh, uh, for some, for people, for for developers or for just users that uh, uh, aren't uh, very familiar how the, the document object model is uh, constructed, they can use this tool and just see inspect uh, everything, uh, and maybe they can use this uh, when writing their extensions or macros. So, what was the idea actually? Uh, the idea of the development tool is that it has to be a tool that is built in ins inside LibreOffice, so no extension again. Uh, the problem with this was, uh, of course, always that extension has to be downloaded and uh, a lot of uh, users uh, don't really know that they exist. So if we have this uh, available inside LibreOffice, uh, out of the box, this is more valuable to the users. Uh, then this should be a docky, dockable window on the bottom of the screen, like very similar to the how development tools are in the popular browsers. It should have like two trees, left hand side and right hand side, where on left hand side it should be just a subset of the document object model where we can uh, go to the current uh, document object, inspect current document object model, but not every everything inside the document object model just what was predefined, uh, just for example, inside uh, Writer, uh, for example, there would be properties uh, for uh, paragraphs, and uh, each paragraph they should has like uh, uh, like each uh, uh, section of the paragraph, and for example, uh, what what is on the left se hand side also is uh, the styles. We, we can expect all the styles that are currently available. 
uh, on the right hand side that then there should be the actual object inspector where we see the a lot of uh, properties and uh, information about the object uh, it should also have a point and click functionality. This is more like uh, whatever you have uh, uh, currently selected, uh, it should be able. We should be able to uh, inspect it. So you select an object, like for example a shape, uh, and if you enable this functionality, you select a shape and you can inspect it inside the object inspector. So, uh, as I said, uh, this is already uh, uh, what I generally uh, described. Uh, for the on for the left hand side again, the document review it should be this should be easier for the new users to understand the document uh, object model and uh, how to navigate it. Uh, so. Uh, on the right hand side, okay, uh, right hand side, uh, the idea on right hand side is that uh, there should be the the object inspector. So similar, sh it should be similar to the watch window that already exists in the site uh, macro editor. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to uh, share the code, but they, they are very similar how they're constructed. And uh, this watch window shows like properties, methods, interfaces of an object, uh, and you can see all the types and current values. And yes, uh, as I said, it should be it's possible to inspect uh, the objects uh, recursively, properties and objects recursively, and uh, supports also looking uh, into the collections, various collections and arrays. Uh, more on this later. So special. Also, what is good to have special handling of certain types. So point and click. As I already say, you you click on uh, inside the document and you can show the an object uh, inside the object inspector. Uh, so, what's the state of the development tools like? Uh, was released uh, inside LibreOffice. I will talk about uh, this uh, how uh, how how the object inspector or development tools uh, are uh, currently inside LibreOffice 7.2. So first one, where where is the doc the the location where we can enable uh, the development tools? Previously, this was in help development tools. But uh, this was not good, pl very a very good good place uh, for the development tools. So I, I moved this to tools development tools, as you can see on the screen. It's uh, like very down where the extension manager custom objects. I think this is uh, and macros. This is a uh, very good place where we can find the development tools. So. The structure, okay. On the left side, as I said, there is the document object model tree view. On the there is uh, a button current selection, which is the point and click functionality. And on the right side, we have the dom document uh, uh, inspector. Uh, on the top, on the right hand side, we have uh, an additional menu for the for the. Uh, object inspector and uh, on the tabs you have interfaces, services, properties and methods. So using the tabs we are changing uh, what we want to see for the current object. So one object to inspect are on the left hand side. Uh, for writer there is uh, like paragraphs, shapes, tables, frames, uh, and so on and so on and for the calc sheets shapes charts pivot tables and so on and also of course for drawing impress there are pages or slides and shapes and so on this is this is uh, what you can generally uh, select inside the document object model tree view and then on the right side side uh, you can you can select it so here you can see 
uh, the location of the point and click. So this current selection is point. Sorry, this current selection is uh, the point and click functionality. It listens to all the changes, uh, selection changes, and then after you select an object, you can uh, inspect it in uh, object uh, uh, inspector. Uh, if you disable this, then you can normally just work uh, with uh, the document review uh, as before. So, if this is enabled, you can you cannot if you select anything inside the document object uh, model tree view, it had will have no respect because uh, the uh, it had no effect because uh, the current selection this button has precedence. Uh, and when it's disabled, then the control goes back to the document object model tree view. So the right hand side, the object inspector. So on the top there is a menu. We have like back inspect and refresh buttons. Uh, back and inspect I will introduce later. Uh, and refresh button just refreshes refreshes the current uh, object. So if the object changes in the between, we can we have to refresh it. This doesn't happen automatically uh, because if we we cannot uh, we don't actually check when the do uh, the uh, the object uh, changes. Uh, maybe this is possible but I don't we I, we didn't implement this was not uh, necessary so we have to take in account that uh, the object can change and uh, it could also be deleted when you are still in, in, uh, inspecting it uh, so refresh it refreshes the current object uh, then on uh, on the right hand side of the uh, toolbar we have like current uh, shows the class name or the current implementation name so we know which object we are uh, inspecting and then on the lower side we have like this tab view where we have interfaces, services, properties and methods uh, so the most interfaces and services are generally not so interesting, it just lists what interfaces the current uh, object supports and ser in which services current object supports. So what's more, Im uh, more, more interesting is properties stuff. So I will exp uh, explain a little bit uh, more in detail what uh, you can find in properties stuff. It shows all the properties of the current uh, object, so properties that are uh, that implement uh, X property set and this is not the only thing it also shows the properties that have uh, that are attributes so they are marked as attribute in uh, inside uh, the object uh, interface uh, definition language uh, and they are also also shown pseudo properties the properties are or any properties or any any methods uh, that are get or set and or set methods so if something starts like get string it will be shown as a string property but of course if get string has no parameters only if it has no parameters it will be shown as a as a property here uh, any other, like I even if he has get something else, uh, get string, and it has an input parameter, it will be shown in the methods. Uh, there are special cases here, uh, and this is that we al also if if um, if the object implements x x index container or x name container or x enumeration, we also want to show. Uh, what are the the content of, of uh, uh, this? So x index uh, it will show all indices of uh, the current object. So we can nicely traverse uh, uh, the document tree. Similar for if it uh, if it implements the x name container, it will show all the 
all the key or name value name property pairs uh, of the current objects inside here uh, this is generally because otherwise it would be very hard to to get to these uh, values uh, if it's not uh, available uh, this special case is not available here and uh, yeah so yeah nesting is possible this is means like uh, recursion is possible so it shows properties uh, in properties in and uh, not only that it shows also special types like uh, of course value types like strings are shown like uh, as uh, values uh, but you can also have structs and arrays so struct you can see struct and you can go and inspect the the properties or the 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 members of a struct and arrays uh, similar like this you can see what all the indices are of the array and s and inspect the their values as well uh the columns here as you can see is like this uh, the columns are like name value type and info so name is just property name value is the value of the property if this is possible to uh, if if it ha it is a value type it is we can we can show the value otherwise not uh, and we show something that is probably uh, helpful helpful uh, like for example uh, sequence for sequence we show also the size of the sequence or array uh, and if there is nothing uh, uh, nothing useful to show then we just don't show anything so the third column is the type we sh here we showed the type of the column either it's a string a byte array or, or some uh, uh, property some or interface or, or whatever it uh, uh, whatever it is the type of uh, this current property and then last column is like info info uh, column and this shows additional info additional info it's many cases like access restrictions like either for example if the property is uh, a pseudo property it shows uh, if it's a getter or it also has a setter or it has both and uh, if uh, the property is just for reading or it can be also for read or writing reading and writing uh, so on the bottom we have like this uh, properties properties like edit text field and this is needed because uh, if you have like value which is a very big one for uh, for example a very very long string we cannot show this inside the inside the tree view because it will be just too long so we always limit this uh, to a certain value uh, certain size of the string or uh, and just show this uh, limited string uh, inside the uh, tree view but the whole string will be shown then in the lower part of the inside this uh, edit text field as you can see on the right side there is a very very long string and we can see An another good thing is that uh, if we want to some copy some or uh, copy something from this string we can do this uh, inside here we cannot do this inside review and of course uh if it's uh inside the tree view we can just show why one row not multiple rows this will be very very annoying so there's always one row and if there are multiple rows uh, of text it will be shown here inside the uh, edit text field so there's also a stack uh because uh, if you right click on a, or or just 
uh, in the tool select this looking glass icon it will be it will inspect the current properties and uh, what what this means is that the this selected property will now go uh, will be now the root uh, the inspected object and uh, wh when we do this we we put the previous object inside stack so in inside the stack so so we also have this uh, back button enabled when we can go just back to the previous uh, selected uh, previous inspected object so we can just form this like chain of uh, inspected uh, uh, objects so it's easier for the user to like if if there is a lot of uh, properties that he is not interested in he can just inspect the current one and it will be on the top and uh, if it ha he, he needs to go back he, he can still go back with the back button uh, if on the DOM tree anything uh, is selected uh, the, the stack is cleared so so uh, it's not like that uh, you can always go back it will be cleared only if you are inspecting inside the current object this is working yes. uh, but if you go to the another object or if you use point and click uh, and select a uh, selected object and um, change the selected object on the, on the GUI the stack will be clear mm. so this is about the properties next is then uh, what is still interesting are the methods so this show now shows all the supported methods of the current objects the methods the method uh, uh, has like uh, these methods have has like uh, one two three four columns and first column is just method is just the name of the method then the return type is the what type will be returned and I don't think this is this is uh, always uh, very exact. Currently, uh, if the return type is more complicated, uh, it will be shown like uh, any, uh, not exactly the type that we are interested in. Uh, this is just to make the GUI uh, more easier to handle. And uh, the third column is like parameters, we just shows what are the input parameters, the name of the parameter and the type, uh, not so just input, also if it's an output or if it's an input-output parameter. And the last column is implementation class. Uh, the Im implementation class is the class uh, where, where the method is implemented. Uh, so this can, if, if uh, the current object is derived from some implementation or some interface, uh, then the interface uh, where this met and this method is defined is uh, written here. Uh, this is all uh, what is currently supported. So uh, there are some more ideas and to-dos uh, for the object inspector. Uh, for example, it would be very good uh, inside methods that we have the possibility to execute a method. This is currently not implemented, but it will be good just if you say, okay, I want to execute this method, and then you, s you would uh, set the parameters and execute it. Uh, I think this can be very good for, uh, for users that want to modify some things quickly. The another thing is also to inspect an object in an independent dialog. So currently we are always inside this uh, development tools, but sometimes we want to just uh, extract some uh, ins inspect an object separately and just always have it uh, uh, on the screen, uh, so it's easier for us to uh, look at multiple object at the same time so I think that if you have a possibility to 
open uh, a dialogue in, in uh, ins independent uh, independent dialogue in a, and uh, inspect the object there it will be very useful so the demo for the demo uh, I have like this uh, one document op open and uh, I'll just show a little bit how, how to work uh, inside with uh, uh, this uh, uh, development tool is an object inspector. So first we can just select uh, current selection and this we will select this uh, shape and now we can go to the properties and as you can see this is now SVX shape collection so so just uh, because you can select multiple shapes it always has a shape collection and the first uh, shape inside the collection is uh, the shape we are inspecting so we can now go inside and for example we are interested in I will put this no we are interested in the to get the shape text where this is uh, located uh, so first we can just go and see here there is a property string that has shape text as the uh, as the value so we can easily uh, inspect and see how uh, wh where this is uh, found so there are also other things that we can inspect here and for example if if uh, we are not inspect uh, interested in uh, we are not interested in uh, the other shapes we can just say here inspect right click inspect or this and now the top level it will be uh, just the uh, text contents of the uh, this shape so for example if now we write some paragraph paragraph one and again we are selecting this so we have like this uh, svx text range uh, and now we have to go inside this because this is again a collection of the ranges we we will just inspect so uh, now we are in one of exactly this text range and we can go again see the string and string is paragraph one like uh, we are selected here uh, and if we are interested in other properties we can see uh, uh, see here whatever other properties uh, we are interested in and uh, if we go to methods we can see all the methods that are so as I say these pseudo properties uh, you can see that this there is a get string method and because this is get strict method it's uh, recognized as a property which is also available here as st just string uh, let's just look inside uh, the document object model here we have like uh, we unselect this and then we can we we see that we have one paragraph and one text portion and this should be exactly this one here and if we look at it string is paragraph one okay this is all for me thanks for uh, listening uh, and this is all oh.